Have you been looking for ways to buff your Urza decks, perhaps? Maybe you want to play more Locusts and you just don't have a way to make your Cloud Post really work for you. Or your Forgotten Monument's solid, but you're tired of the caves that have to enter the battlefield tapped. Planar Nexus is going to be the card for you. And it is not only a brand new land in Modern Horizons 3 that is actually going to be legal to play in Commander and other Eternal formats, it is quite literally a utility card I'm not sure I ever thought they'd actually make. So let's talk about it in today's video. Planar Nexus, the utility land that can do it all. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for all the support. If you do enjoy the video, please hit the like button and subscribe and then click that bell icon if you want to stay notified. It's a super simple thing and it does help me tremendously. So I'm extremely grateful for those of you who take the time to do it and just being here and watching in general. So thank you so much for that. Today's video, we're going to talk about a single card called Planar Nexus and a lot of the combos and different types of lands that it can interact with. But let's take a look at the card itself first. So Planar Nexus is a land. It enters the battlefield untapped, which is awesome. And it is every non-basic land type. Now, there is some elaboration on this in, in terms of Wizards when they put the article out, but just a few examples, uh, deserts, locusts, urza lands, caves, all things we're going to talk about in today's video. You can tap this to add just a colorless mana, or you can pay one and tap to add one mana of any color. But what makes this card so cool to me is the fact that it allows you the ability to get a non-tap, one that doesn't enter tapped, utility land that is not a legendary that fits into so many different strategies so having access to a card like this for urzas having access to a card like this for cloud post we'll talk about all those individual combos but this card is so cool and there's a card called nearby planet that was actually re released in infinity uh it pretty much does something very similar although it also had basic land types which i think might have been way too strong for uh you know non acorn formats because it can be fetched but this card does a ton into see a real card like this they actually took nearby planet and made it into a legit thing is super exciting so let's take a look at some of the different combos and different lines that this actually works within and just talk about them First up are the Urza lands. Now, many of you are familiar with the Urza lands if you've played Magic, going back to cards like Urza's Power Plant and Urza's Mine from many years ago. But while those cards are good and obviously interact with each other, perhaps the best Urza's land that this card works with is Urza's Workshop, which was printed in the Brothers War Commander. This card is an Urza's land that says tap, add colorless, but then has metal craft. You can tap and add colorless for each Urza's land you control. Activate only if you control three or more artifacts. So while there's a large number of Urza lands you can already play, being able to utilize this card then allows you to get additional ones out from the deck. So, of course, Planar Nexus can just straight up be an Urza's land, which means you have another way to get mana, while it also is counting as other lands. So if you're synergizing or perhaps playing some kind of combination engine, if you will. Cards like Urza's Cave, which just came out as an announcement for Modern Horizons 3. It's an uncommon land that is an Urza's Cave, so it counts for both. Of course, can tap for Columbus or pay three and sack it to search your library for a land, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. So two really strong cards. And if you combo with something like Thespian Stage, which can actually become a copy of either, well, I mean, technically it could become a copy of either Urza's Workshop or Planar Nexus, but you can start to really kind of stack up and get some extra mana combinations going on there, which is just, you know, a really, really fun, especially for colorless decks to have access to that. But in general, as like an engine to ramp mana quickly in, in you know, only a few turns, this does a beautiful job of that. And decks that are already playing a lot of Urza's Lands, especially with Workshop, are really going to like Planar Nexus and Urza's Cave for what it's worth. Locusts are definitely one of the lands that I think fans get excited about the idea of or support for because they've definitely been popular cards, but there's really only two. There's Cloud Post, which enters the battlefield tapped, but does allow you to tap to add one to your mana pool for each Locust in play. And then there's Glimmer Post, which doesn't enter tap, but only taps for one colorless, though it does allow you to gain life for each Locust on the battlefield. That's kind of okay, but what's kind of cool about this is that you can utilize this Planar Nexus now to be able to make more Locusts it's not exactly the craziest strategy, really just due to the limited av availability of lands that can do that. And honestly, in Commander, I don't think it's going to be super usable either way. The sad part is, is that, of course, this card is only in the Commander decks. It is not going to be a legal card in 
just your straight up like you know modern horizons 3 set meaning that you won't be able to play this in any format that's not like legacy or vintage or commander but in those formats perhaps there are ways to make this work where you can play multiple copies of planar nexus multiple copies of cloud post glimmer post etc and you've got a pretty sizable locus base that can allow you to ramp mana pretty quickly uh time remains to tell whether or not they will be printing more locus cards in the future i'm certainly you know would be something to revisit at that point for commander if they did maybe they'll even make a locus you know base commander deck similar to the desert deck but for now we work with what we have definitely is worth mentioning but i don't think it's the strongest of the combo lines available with this card All right, so next up we've got Caves, and again, the really unfortunate part is that this card is not going to be legal in Standard or Modern, so you can't necessarily do as much as I'd like to with, you know, 60-card decks and being able to maximize the combos, but you can obviously do those things in Legacy and Vintage. I just don't know if those strategies are actually going to be viable compared to things that already exist, but still, just talking about some of the combos. Caves that came out in Lost Caverns of Ixalan, there's some really fun synergy there. The deck is fun in Standard, but a lot of what actually works quite well with it is some of the key cards for it. So we've got Forgotten Monument, which basically turns all your other caves into pain lands, allowing them to tap for one man of any color at the cost of one life. And then we've also got cards like Echoing Deeps, which can enter the battlefield as a copy of a cave in the graveyard. So it could enter the battlefield as a copy of Planar Nexus, and then you have access to all lands if for some reason you weren't able to play it, had it engraved, what have you. But then we've got cards like Cosmium Confluence as well, and this card is probably the most, the best example of why this card would be kind of, uh, you know, busted in some formats. The Cosmium Confluence allows you to pick any of three nodes and activate them up to three times. The best one, of course, in this case is search your library for a cave and put it onto the battlefield. You could do that three times, so if you were playing a 60-card constructed format where both of those cards were legal, you could take three copies of Planar Nexus and put it onto the battlefield, which means you'd have, you know, three extra Urza lands, three extra pretty much anything you know with the stuff we're talking about here deserts whatever it may be um and obviously a card like that so you're paying five mana to get access to three lands that encompass all different land types that's pretty strong and it's it's a shame because something like that would be extremely fun to experiment with in in i think modern but Maybe in Legacy or Vintage, which again are not formats I am super well versed with, which is kind of unfortunate, but I, I think my understanding is that pretty much everything is legal outside of, you know, the specific ban list for those formats, so there's no reason you can't try these things, um, or, you know, if you're just playing, or maybe at some point we'll get a card like this that'll also be legal in Modern, because if it was legal in Modern, all of these things we're talking about here would be so much more applicable um to these these combos but i mean just being able to get access to different caves if you can play you know four copies of each of these especially with a card like cosmium confluence you are absolutely setting yourself up to be in a very very strong position All right, and finally, we're going to talk about deserts and gates, and I'm putting the two of them together because a lot of these synergies are going to be, you know, kind of similar, sort of easy to explain, but starting off with deserts, we're looking at cards like Yuma Proud Protector, which was the face commander for the Desert Bloom deck that came out just a couple weeks ago now with Outlaws. We talked about this card in detail. It is very good, but of course, synergizes really well with deserts in general when deserts are put into your grave, so this deck is playing a lot of desert cards. You can utilize this in conjunction with cards like Map the Frontier, for example, which costs four mana, but lets you search your library for up to two basic lands and or desert cards and put them on the battlefield. If you are playing in a constructed format, you can use this to get, you know, two copies of Planar Nexus, or you can get Planar Nexus and something else, but get out an additional desert plus whatever else you need to grab. And then you have cards like Sand Scout, which is one in a white that when it ETBs, if your opponent controls more lands, you search your library for a desert, put it onto the battlefield. Basically another way to get Planar Nexus. And what's cool about this is you don't even have to be playing desert you can be playing any of those lands as long as you're playing white in the deck this can grab that card out of the deck for you and give you access to whatever other lands you need on the gate side of things of course we've got nine fingers keen as the commander typically for that allowing you to look at gates put them onto the battlefield and then you know getting extra gates cards into your hand using that with cards like maze's end which allow you to search your library for a gate card put it on the battlefield then shuffle if you control 10 or more gates with different names you win the game so we have another gate that's not going to enter tapped it's searchable by plenty of different things and you can even mix those synergies together to maybe get access to what you want faster with cards like sand scout so it's a really really interesting card that i just feel like opens up a lot of bonuses for a ton of decks and obviously i wish it was going to be in the main set because being able to play it at four in 
you know, a format like modern would be huge in terms of what you could do. But I think I kind of see the logistic behind not doing it that way. So obviously everyone's going to have different opinions on it, but that's going to do it for this video. I want to put it over to you guys. What do you think about planar nexus? There's definitely some land types. I'm not thinking of off the top of my head that this probably synergizes well with too. So feel free to sound off in the comments and discuss among yourselves. And yeah, we'll see, I guess, how the card does when it comes out. But I'm pretty excited about it. And I can't wait to see what other stuff we get for modern horizons as the weeks continue. So I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.